Everyone is very welcome and we thank God for your lives today. We have a message from the living God that we title Three Factors in Spirituality. Three Factors in Spirituality. Spirituality. You know, in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 6 all the way to chapter 3 and verse 3. When you read it, scriptures, you know, identify four categories of people in relation to understanding Bible mysteries. And among the four, it is only the spiritual man which has spiritual life this is the only one who has access to the mysteries of the kingdom of God that are revealed in the Bible. So, when we say we walk with God, it is important for one to really see yourself coming up higher and higher and higher so that you come to a point that indeed, the mystery, the kingdom mysteries, as you read this Bible, it doesn't become just an ordinary book that you are reading, but indeed a spiritual book where mighty revelations, hidden truth, are revealed on today that come up higher. So our spiritual life is extremely important. Spirituality, we said that <laughs> it is composed by itself of three factors. Number one factor is regeneration, a word that is much, much, much emphasized in the Bible. And this word is simply meaning to be born again, to become a Christian. It means you have to have salvation. Or that one has to be saved. In other words, an unbeliever, an unbeliever cannot live the life of a spiritual man. An unbeliever cannot live that spiritual life. Because it takes the step of coming or being born again, coming to Jesus Christ, for that life to be opened up unto you. So it is only believers that can develop spiritual life. Therefore, the first factor that we said is regeneration uh, in spirituality is important to bring forth more details. What is then the meaning of regeneration in details? There is a scripture here in John 3 and the verses 5 to 6. Jesus Christ was speaking and Jesus he said Valery, Valery, I say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And he emphasized it by saying that that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. You have to see that which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit with capital S that is the Holy Spirit, becomes what spirit, spirit man or spiritual man with small s. So it is something that proceeds out of the spirit of God. A man needs to be born again by the spirit, by the Holy Spirit, by the spirit of almighty God. It doesn't stop just here. 
In the book of Tertius, 3, 5 says, he said, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. The washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. So you can see that <laughs> uh, the means of regeneration, it is the Holy Ghost. The means of regeneration, it is the Holy Ghost. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is the flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is indeed spiritual man. So we can see, you can be at the church and be born again of the flesh. You can be at the church and be born again of the flesh. The man has never come to understand the impact of the inner life. The man has not come to understand the impact of being born of the spirit to become a spiritual man. So he's moving in carnality in the church, causing all kinds of problems and, and strife and contention and all that. But the one that is born of the spirit, the one that is born of the spirit, judges all things. He judges all things according to what is in the spiritual realm. Holy Spirit is the one that is doing that work. He's the one behind it. Of course, when one is coming, being drawn by the Spirit of God, no one cometh to God except God draws you. We come in faith. We are coming in faith. Uh, but faith itself is not the means of regeneration. Faith itself is not the, mean, the means of regeneration. But faith it is the human requirement. Faith is the human requirement which enables the Holy Spirit to do the work of regeneration. It takes faith to allow the Spirit of God to bring you to a higher height. A man of God. A woman of God. So you can see that as we move around and say that we are children of God. We are children of God. I'm a child of God. And proclaiming it. It is not something that is, is physical. It is not. It's a spiritual matter here. Are you indeed? Have you been worked by the Holy Ghost? Have you been touched by the Holy Ghost? Have you, you know, been, been, been washed in the water and the blood of Jesus Christ by the Holy Ghost? Faith is necessary. But once we have come, we have to be yielded so that the Spirit of God will emerge us into spiritual truth to come up higher and higher. This morning I was saying something. I said, look at the baptism by itself. Baptism is by immersion. So in other words, we soak the people into the water. The whole body is soaked. Until one has come to a point to understand that you need to yield yourself to they that are going to take you into the water and bring you out of the water. You don't go in by yourself. And we don't come out by ourselves. We do not baptize ourselves. So it is. Faith is enabling you to come and yield yourself unto the hand of the Spirit of God. To soak you into the deep truth of Almighty God. For you to come up higher and say that indeed, <laughs> a spiritual man does not see the way that a carnal man will see. Because the carnal man judges all things according to the flesh. But the spiritual man, he judges nothing.
by the appearance except what the Lord God has revealed in the realm of the spirit that is what he takes and stand on it and move accordingly we are not moved by the sight but by the spirit by the spirit this is where the power of the child of God is coming from because when it seems like everything is crashing around you the spiritual man is not moved because what the Lord God is showing him and what is happening in the physical realm, they are two different things. Unfortunately, everyone is moved because everyone is in the flesh. In the flesh. And they cannot see what the Lord God is doing and where God is moving. Are you not touched by what this person said? I am not touched because it doesn't touch me. These are not part of the things that touches me. What he said is only coming to my flesh. It's not something that is hidden my inner man. There are things that are important in life. If a man is carried away by life canalities, you will be faded out. You will be driven by every wave in life and you will miss God's assignment. So when we start talking about regeneration, uh, this, this has nothing to do with age. Of course, we don't baptize children because we want them to come to a point that they understand the word of God and having the faith to allow the Holy Spirit to emerge them into the water of the living God. And coming out to be the great people that God has called them to, to be. So, do not think that, oh, uh, being born again. Uh, today, the message was just uh, being born again. No, we are talking about life here. We are talking about what is making others to make it living in dominion and others are being crushed at all points. This is what we are talking about today. What is making the person to stand? What is it that you have? I am doing this. It's not working. I am no. The person is matured spiritually. Maturity. The spiritual man is a man that has come to be hit with the truth of God and will not be moved by nothing else except by the truth. It's important because we see the Titus three and five that we 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 we, we, we read. He said, according to God's mercy. Jesus Christ saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. The renewing. That one is so important. The renewing of our minds. The rene so the regeneration itself is a complete. So therefore, if anyone is in, in Christ, he's a new creature. All things, they are passed away. Behold, everything has become new. Everything has become new. Your face has not been changed. It's the inner man that has been touched. By spiritual truth. And the Lord is going to work on this person to a higher height gradually. The renewing doesn't, it's not, it's not an instant thing. The renewing aspect of our mind is a walk with God. It's a walk with God. Spiritual man takes every step, seeing things from God's perspective. You see the person, you, you say, oh, now this one. Even mighty ones have been falling down. Even mighty ones have been falling down. How much more this one? Hey, they don't know you. They are just judging you from the physical aspect of things. So if you move around and then pretending to people that you are such a wonderful man of God, such, such a wonderful woman of God, it is your spiritual state, your spiritual stand that would prove that indeed you are a child of God. A child of God cannot be driven anyhow by anyone. You cannot just come and display your so-called power. When, a, when, when you are dealing with a child of God, it doesn't work like that. There are places, our brother Johnson made a statement, he said, Pastor, let me tell you, from what you have told me, I can see that there are places that devil does not go. I know that there are places that are marked with the blood of Jesus Christ. And say, this is a non-go area. And the guy, he knows. 
He saw Job. He said, God said, have you seen Job's, Job's house? He said, God, of course I have seen Job's house. But what am I going to do in Job's house? Every time that I'm seeing Job, Job's house, Job's house is surrounded with fire. You think I'm stupid? I'm not. Indeed, when one has come to accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, that person exercises faith. That faith, we said it, that is what allows, allows the Holy Spirit to do the work of regeneration. So, in reality, we say that faith and regeneration, they occur simultaneously. Because the instant one believes, one is regenerated. The instant, as soon as you believe, your state is no more the same. The Lord picks you. So this is a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing, but you have to accept it. You have to accept it that this is, this is your new position. You are now in Christ. You are now in Christ. You are now a child of God. So the renewing aspect of the mind it's a process, it's a gradual process as you desire to come up higher and higher. The Lord will take you from one level of glory to another and what they used to be doing by just tossing you anyhow, they come to find out that you are no more in the same position. Things have been changed. Things have been changed. I will also like to say that the word of God is not the means of regeneration, neither. We said that faith itself is not the means of re regeneration, but it helps the Holy Spirit to do his work. The word of God is not the means of regeneration e either, but the word, you know, it provides the content of faith, all right? The word provides co the content of of faith. So the word generates faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Behind it, it is the Holy Spirit that is at work. The Holy Spirit, you know, bringing, doing such a wonderful work in the world. One day we will talk about this. <laughs> As we are here, God is willing to see everyone being saved. What about they that are out there that have not come to know him yet? Those unbelievers. How are they going to come? As we are preaching the gospel, they said that they are not hearing it. But don't worry. The Lord is at work. The Spirit of God, one of the greatest ministry of the Holy Spirit is in the world. He is just out there convicting people of sin. Convicting people. All of us, we have been there. And one way or another, God is just going to open the door for you and come to a point to say that, you know what? <laughs> this thing that I have been doing, indeed, is not helping me. I better let go and submit my entire life into the hand of God. Some of us, that is how we are all coming to know our Lord Jesus Christ. But it was the work of the Holy Spirit. It was the work of the Holy Spirit. But once we are here, and we are hearing the word of the living God, we, you know, the word gave that, you know, that faith, so that <laughs> it, 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 it tells us simply, it, it, you know, the, the order that one has to follow to come to be regenerated. Very important. Very, very important. Many are moving around thinking that, you know, I don't think that it's simply, uh, it's this, this one, since it's a spiritual thing here, it's a matter of heart. It's a matter of heart. It's not just when you confess. You see, it's not just when, when, when you confess. If you come to a point to see that Jesus Christ is your treasure, the heart will be there. And the Lord will start working with you. And something definitely is going to help you. Going to turn your whole life around. Spiritual truth. That's where the power of the believer is. 
They that are not deceiving themselves, thinking that, oh, I'm a child of God. And then that's it. No, this one here, it is something that is within spiritual truth that has been taking place in the spirit man. Now that I have talked about the means of regeneration, let's see the basis of regeneration. Well, the basis of regeneration, we have also seen it a little bit. It is faith. Faith, we said, is not the means, but it is the human requirement that allows the Holy Spirit to do his work of regeneration. The book of John, John chapter 1 and the verses 12 and 13. He said this, Jesus Christ said, he said, as many, as many as receive Jesus, To them, he gave power to become the sons of God. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Which were, not, I mean, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. You see that? This aspect here is important. He gave them power to become the sons of God. According to they that receive him in faith. And once they have received him in faith, the birth, the regeneration is not something that is an act. Not a, an act, a physical act. Not a birth, not a physical birth of the blood of the human blood of, of the, or of the human flesh. But it is something that is of the will of God. In other words, there has been purpose-driven life statement here. Something that is ordained from heaven. Something that God knows that you're coming here. You know, sometimes there was a question that came this morning in Sunday school. Say, so what about how do we deal with people that will come to God in so much pretension? Oh, so they come disguising themselves as people of light. But inwardly, they are just wolves in the sheep clothes. He said that it takes the spirit of discernment to discern such people. We thank God it is among the gifts. The gift that God has given us. But even when you have found out that this is the state of this person, how do you approach the whole situation? Wisdom, 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 wisdom. But indeed, I made a statement. I said, you know what? Our God is not a God that deals with us. He does not deal with us according to what we will do to him tomorrow. The Lord deals with us according to our current state. The Lord deals with us according to our current behavior. If today you act with God, I love you. Oh, you are my all in all. Without you, I can do nothing. And you are, even if it is in fake, God will still treat you according to what you are giving him. That is where you see the power of Almighty God. You know why? Because he's the omnipotent God. There is nothing that a man will do that will change God. Whatever that anyone will put before God, the Lord is in control. God is in control. He is in control. Somebody cannot come to your life in such a great deception and thinking that that person is going to crush you. Let me tell you, what you are sowing, you're going to reap it. Yes, that is why I preach the gospel saying that one must be careful of his life because without wisdom, people are perishing. And the wisdom is coming from the knowledge of the word of the living God. What the Lord says, that is how you must be living your life. So you cannot dictate to people how they must live their lives. But you have to watch your own life. You, may, you better make sure that your home is protected so that a gossiper will not come and show evil to destroy your home. 
You cannot tell the person that, well, hey, hey, don't give me... Don't be a gossip. Don't be telling stories on people. I mean, you can talk from morning till morning. It will not change that person. If the person doesn't want to change. But I say this. Since that person had made the decision to live his or her life that way. Uh, if the person decides not to assume her own responsibility. And moving around. And using her choice. To cause so much havoc around her. You must not allow your home to be destroyed by such a person. That would be foolishness. That would be foolishness. This is what we are talking about this morning. Wisdom, you know, lack of wisdom had destroyed so many. So many. But the word of God. The one that is truly born of God. Not of the flesh. But by the will of the living God, you want to make sure that the fulfillment of the purpose of God is established in your life. Someone has been released himself, if not anyone, at least Satan and his demons. They have sworn to your life that there is no way that they will allow the, the purpose of God to come to pass in your life. If you don't know, I'm telling you today, if you think that you have no enemies, I am telling you that Satan had made a vow that he will not allow you to be doing well, physically and spiritually. He will fight you from every corner and use everything that is around him, that is, that, that, that is in his possession, against your life. It is only your own understanding that will allow you to live. If you don't know your position of strength, you will move out of it and you will be killed. That's it. And so many are gone, gone to their graves without understanding, without these principles that we are talking about here. So the, the word, you know, being born again, regenerated by Almighty God meant nothing for them. Nothing. They came here, they ate, they were thinking of the type of you know, food that they will be eating every morning. They wake up and say, today I'm going to cook Eba. Uh, this evening when I come, I will be cooking for food. I mean, I mean, noises filled of his life. But God said that man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You know why? It is because in the word is your destiny. In the word is the purpose and the assignment of the day. You will not be driven out and tossed by any wind that blows around you. Well, because he, he's a spirit man. He's a spirit man. We said there are three factors in spirituality. We talk about one, which is regeneration. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. But number two factor in spirituality is the Holy Spirit himself. Is the Holy Spirit himself. Spiritual life requires the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Spiritual life requires the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is involved in five different ways in our spiritual life. We're going to see those. A man, a spirit man cannot live his life outside the Holy Spirit. It takes the power of the Holy Ghost to one that is spiritual to live and exercise spiritual power. That would trigger forth physical breakthrough. People don't understand it. Hebrews 11, 3, through faith, we understand that the wells were framed by the word of God. That the things that we see, they are not made of things which do appear. I'm always quoting this scripture. Because the spiritual world rules the physical. There is nothing that is coming to take place in the realm of the flesh. In the realm of the, you know, of the world. In the realm of the physical without spiritual manifestation. Impossible. Everyone that have not come to understand this, 
You will fall victim in life. I, I will give you in writing. You will fall it. You will definitely fall to be a victim of life. If you don't understand that you are thinking when you wake up and then that said, hey, God, I thank you for allowing me to see another day. Who told you that you are going to <laughs> see the whole day? Who told you? You have no idea what has been planned against you. Since you wake up and the flesh is alive, you said, Lord, thank you for what? But you don't know. Don't thank God yet. Don't thank God yet because something has been planned way before. You, are not even, you didn't even know Christ at that time. And that then, he said, they said that you are not going to pass that age of 32. Your anniversary is just around the corner. Have no idea that you are just <laughs> at, the, at the point of going. We said five different ways that the Holy Spirit intervened in our spiritual life. Number one. The Holy Spirit teaches us spiritual truth. This one is taught here by John 16 and the verses 12 to 15. He said, Jesus said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come the spirit of truth that is the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit who is called the spirit of truth is come he will guide you unto all truth <laughs> that what I love it he will guide you unto all truth Jesus said I am the way and the truth the way and the truth so you know so once we have come by regeneration, it takes the power of the Holy Spirit. A man has to yield his life unto the hand of the Holy Spirit for guidance. He will guide you unto all truth. What you are seeing in the physical, that is just flesh aspect of it. The spiritual implication, it is devastative. You just don't know. But when the Spirit of God when that situation will be exposed by the Spirit of God, when the Spirit of God will be in that situation, you will know all truth. You will know all truth about that situation. All truth. He will guide you into all truth. Why? Because the Trinity is at work. Heaven is open over your life. The Trinity is at work. Why is that? That the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. Because for the Holy Spirit himself shall not speak of himself. The Holy Spirit is not speaking by himself. But whatsoever he shall hear from the Father and the Son. That shall he speak. You see that? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to hear that it is written concerning your destiny. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. He said, I have not seen it. Ye have not heard it. Neither have it entered into the heart of any man. The things that God had prepared for them that love him. But... God had revealed those things unto us by his spirit, by the Holy Spirit. He said, for the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. That it is written concerning your life, is hidden in God. Witches cannot find out. They can only frustrate your life. Wizards cannot find out. They can only frustrate your life. That is why when a spiritual man is at, uh, you know, at work in his life, he is like a lion, a lion, wonderful lion. You don't come and uh, and try the in the den of the lion anyhow. No way. They will try to frustrate you, but they don't know the details of the plan of God. God knows this. Say, I have not seen it. Anything that have eyes cannot grab it. 
Ye have not heard it. Anything that have yes will not understand. It hasn't come to the, the heart of any man. So no matter of fact, what God has purpose for your life, there is no man, no man that can come against it. It is the word of the living God. That is why he said, when he says yes, nobody says no. It is written. It is written. But when a man had been yielded, I mean, had yielded himself unto the leaders of the Holy Spirit, that man is a spiritual man. He works with the truth from heaven. He works according to the, what he is hearing from above. Which is not even of the Holy Spirit himself. But the perfect will of the Father and the Son. Which is one and the same. He hears and he speaks into your heart. And he's guiding you. Not only I'm going to tell you, but we are doing it together. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not just going to tell you, but we are doing it together. They see you coming. Physically, someone who's spiritual eyes is closed will see just a regular human being coming but someone whose eyes is open will come to find out that you are not alone <laughs> hallelujah you are not alone you are not alone they that are with us they are greater and mightier and more than they that are with them i have come this morning to tell you that it is well with you because of your state as a child of God, it is only when you don't understand who you are that they come around and just be, you know, tossing and bossing around you. But the one that is truly spiritual, the one that will not, you know, be mangling with chickens when he knows that he's an eagle, that one cannot be just, uh, uh, you know, be tossed by, 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 by the devils. They are placed that are non-go area for those devils. He would not speak of himself, but what he hears, that shall he speak. And watch this. I'm still reading John 16. And I am on the second part of the verse 13. The end of it. He said, The Holy Spirit will show thee things to come. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will show thee things to come. When people are moving around from fetish priest to Baba to uh, enchantress to sorceress and divinations and all kinds of stuff just to know just to find out what is to come. By the time that you are, <laughs> hey, it can be trance, it can be dream, it can be vision, it can be open vision. A spiritual man is not someone, someone that you have been, you know, you, you, you must be tossing around. No way. Only one condition that you know your, your spiritual state. Romans 6, 14, that is where the power is. Sin shall not have dominion over you because you are not under the law. You are under grace. And if you are under grace, there is a spirit in grace that is called the Holy Spirit. And when a man is walking with the Holy Spirit, he is not just a man. He is a spiritual man. He will show you the things to come. You will be on your bed what they have planned. In the gathering of the witches and the wizards, what they have planned to come and carry forth to your children, the Lord will just even take you there. He will take you there. You will be there. You will be seeing them. You will be hearing everything. Meanwhile, you wake up from your bed. And you lift up a hand and say, Father, to you alone be the glory. Why? Because the Lord showed it to you so that you might use it back to him to fight your battle. The mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I thank you for such a wonderful vision, my Lord and my Savior. I stand here by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. I come against all gathering of the witches, against my life. Holy Ghost, fire! Amen. Something 
is happening. Something will definitely happen. He will show you the things to come. Jesus said, you see, as you are being lifted up by the leadings and the working of the Holy Spirit, you are coming up higher and higher. Jesus said that when the Holy Spirit is doing that, it is bringing glory to me. It is bringing glory to me. <laughs> God takes pleasure to see you doing well. Say amen. amen. God is pleased and takes glory to see you doing well. Which means that the Lord will be grieved to see one being killed by carelessness and victim of life. Why? You did not fulfill his purpose. You allow which? As a, go stand before Jesus Christ and tell Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, uh, I am here because my auntie killed me. So who is your auntie? He said, oh, Akosia Mensa. That is, uh, said, look at you. Look at you. My name is Jesus, not Akosia Mensa. That name that I gave to you is a name to protect your life. It's a name that overcomes because at the mention of that name, a question man will bow. Why is he doing that? Because he said in John 16, 14, Holy Spirit, he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the father had are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and he shall show it unto you. You see that? Heaven is in agreement with your life. A spiritual man is a man whose life comes in agreement with heaven. God put you here. God had made all provisions, necessary provisions, available. To you to accomplish that assignment. Including taking care of what you are afraid that much. He knows. He knows. To God alone be the glory. We said five things. We have mentioned only one. Which is the Holy Spirit. He teaches us all spiritual truth. Number two. The Holy Spirit is involved in guiding us. He is involved in guiding us. This one is very straightforward. Romans 8 and the verse is 14. He said, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, they are the sons of God. They are the sons of God. If you are led by the Holy Spirit, you are a child of God. There are many voices in the world. Many, many, many voices. Many voices. Maybe the Spirit came to you. Revealed the situation to you in a dream. How would you know that this is coming from God? We have seen it. That the Holy Spirit is not speaking by himself. So if indeed what you heard, what you received is from God, it will never go against the word of God. Never. Never. Never go against the word of God. Some people are receiving very real dream and saying that God told me. God showed me. But what you are telling me, it's totally against the word of God. God cannot work against his word. You want to find out what dream is from God and what is not. It is in the mirror of the word that will expose what is of God and what is not of God. God cannot speak against himself. So would God do this, such a thing to you? Would God lead you into such a situation? You are dreaming seeing somebody's husband to be your husband. It is not from God. It is not from God. You are dreaming hearing, you know, uh, someone telling you, uh -huh, this husband of yours, he has become very stubborn. This is what you have to do. Give it to his face and you will break through. It is not from God. It cannot be from God. 
It goes against his word. It is totally the opposite that God wants you to, to, to behave. So the so-called God said, God said, and I received from God and all that. Please, if you want to make sure that it is from God, in the light of the word, you shall know if it's from God or not. Spiritual man, spiritual woman. The children of God, they are led by the spirit of God. And they do not go against the word of God. Number three. The Holy Spirit gives us assurance of our salvation. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit gives us assurance of our salvation. Romans 8, 16. He said the Spirit, the Holy Spirit itself, beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. <laughs> the Holy Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And when you are a child of God, you will know that you are a child of God. There are certain things that a child of God will not do. Simple. There are certain things that a child of God will not do. A child of God will not entertain himself or herself in, you know, in situations of sin. Why there is sin, he runs away. There are situations that a child of God cannot get himself or herself in that situation. The spirit in you cannot take it. You are quenched. The environment is quenching you. The hearing alone is not allowing you to be comfortable. And we, run, we, we just run away from, from, from the, those things. So when you are a child of God, you know. A child of God will not be visiting Baba. A child of God, when he wants to know something about the future, is not someone that is roaming around trying to find out from so-called river. Hey, they said that that man is very powerful. But I don't care where he gets his, uh, his, his power from. All that I want to know is for him to solve my problem. We have many like that. They don't care about where they go. All that they want is to see the problem solved. Now let me tell you, devil is moving around. He knows this. So he's moving around, deceiving so many. Deceiving so many. The guy, it seems like your problem is solved, but it is not. It is temporary solved. And it's being prepared with a higher bomb to come and hit you later on. Your state will be worse than ever. It is better to come at the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every single step that the Lord will make, every step that God will make, this is where I'm going to place my feet. Gradually, but surely I'm going. It might not be a run, <laughs> but it's just step by step. But surely I am going. Thank you, Lord. A higher height. A higher height. A child of God knows that he is or she is a child of God. By the witness of the Holy Spirit, you are going to a situation the Spirit is you know, prompting you. You need to stop. You need to stop. The way you are behaving to your wife, the Spirit is prompting you. Please, come down. This situation of anger, this, this problem of anger that you have, the Spirit keeps telling you that you need to work out things so you don't break the commandments of Almighty God. Your heart is so hardened because this woman is getting on your neck. So the woman, you have to do something to teach her a lesson. God said, it is his Holy Spirit that teaches, not you. Come and state your case before Almighty God. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. He says, be careful for nothing. But in all things, including when your wife is driving you crazy. Okay? In all things. He said, with prayer, not with slappings. With prayer and supplications, with thanksgiving to God. I bless your name for this wonderful woman that you have given me. How many of us can really say that? 
The woman is getting on your neck. But you are coming in prayer. Supplication and thanksgiving. He said, then let your request be made known to God. The woman slapped you this morning. Father. <laughs> it seems so stupid, but it seems like. But if you are able to get there. By the spirit empowerment. It is the spirit of God that gives power to live. Including enduring, you know, a nagging woman, a nagging wife. So once you have done this, then you watch. He said, the peace of the Lord, that is verse 7, that surpasses all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. When the woman is throwing plates, you will not hear that noise. You won't see anything. But you will only see the goodness of God. The purpose of God that is coming to pass. This woman is coming to a point to know that indeed I have been called to be a helper on my husband's side. It takes two people to fight. One raised up the fight and the other one is not responding. There is no fight. Dialogue is also with two people. One start talking, 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 the other one is not, uh, <laughs> you know, answering. It is called monologue. You will start it, you will stop it by yourself. Thank you, Lord. We said that the Holy Spirit gives us assurance of our salvation. That was number three. That we are children of God. We know by the testimony, by the leadings, by the witness of the Holy Spirit that indeed we are children of God. Number four, the Holy Spirit is also praying for us. The Holy Spirit is praying for us. Romans 8 and the verses 26 to 27. To God alone be the glory. He said, likewise, the Holy Spirit also helps us. You know, he helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. Hallelujah. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. You remember what I said before? In 1 Corinthians 2, 9, it talks about, you know, it is written that, he said, <coughs> I have not seen it, ye have not heard it, ye have not entered into the heart of any man the things that God had prepared for them that love him. But God had revealed those things to us by his spirit. And the spirit is such at all things, yea, the deep things of God. The spirit, when he has hold of the deep things of God concerning your life, that's what the spirit is going to pray about. By the time that you are praying for car, by the time that you are praying for car, the Holy Spirit is praying for bicycle. By the time that you are praying for car, the Holy Spirit is praying to God for, to give you a bicycle. And you will be just out there, hey, and uh, God, why are you doing this to me? Look at this one. They just came to America, and this thing uh, is working for them. I have been here, and I'm still riding on the bicycle, taking the transport, the, uh, you know, public transportation and all that. That's where God wants you to be. It's just a matter of time. When your time is up, maybe it's not a car that is going to ride you. It might be a plane. It might be a plane. It might be a plane. Number five. By the way, because the Holy Spirit is praying for us, it is important as spiritual, spiritual men and spiritual women to come to understand that our prayers has to be in line with the purpose of God. So we have to demand from God to teach us how to pray. We have to ask God of what he wants us to pray about. Then indeed, you'll be in line with the perfect will of almighty God. <laughs> Prayer. Number five, we said the Holy Spirit 
He gives us spiritual gifts for the growth of the local body of the church. The Holy Spirit gives us spiritual gifts for the growth of the local body. It is expressed right here in 1 Corinthians 12, the verse is 4 to 7. He says, now there are diversities of gifts by the same Holy Spirit. And there are, you know, differences of, uh, of administrations by the same Lord Jesus Christ. And there are diversities of oppressions but the same God, the Father, which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone to profit the all. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone. You see, so can you see how the Trinity is working here according to the gifts? There are gifts from the Holy Spirit, gifts from Jesus Christ, the Son, and there are gifts also from God, the Father. Thank you, my Lord. So these gifts that are given, one day we will talk about the gifts in the body of Christ where everyone has something given to supply for the edification of the body. Then you will come to find out there's no strife, no contention because everyone is supplying. Everyone is supplying. Hallelujah. I have mentioned the five things that I said I was going to mention. And the last one, we said that three points we're going to see. Number one, generation, regeneration. Number two, the Holy Spirit. And number three, time. Number three, time. We are talking about the three factors of spirituality. We said number one, regeneration. Number two, the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit. And number three, time. Obviously, we're not going to dwell much on time because spirituality is something that comes up with time. It takes time to attain the stage of a spiritual man. Just as a physical development to a child takes time, so it is also in the spiritual realm. So we don't run. We don't run. No one, you know, is spiritual, you know, is spiritual we, we know within the day that the person is born again. It takes time. It takes time. So, this is it for today. May the Lord God bless you. May the Lord bless his purpose for your lives. Everything that you have heard, let it be a working, powerful tool in your lives in the name of Jesus Christ. To the Father alone be the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.